Hi, I'm Aaron. In November 2017, my wife and I bought a place on 25 acres. And I really wanted to do this outside, but it is always windy here. So I came into the shop, barn, whatever it is. She's been calling it Black Sparrow Ranch since we bought the place and we got a couple of llamas this week. So I guess it's official now, but um, that's for another video. What I want to talk about today is uh, adjusting to life in the country and things that didn't occur to me and I wish I knew before we moved here. The first one is the distance and that's kind of a no-brainer, but it's kind of a pain to get to anywhere. Um, we want the distance between us and other people and us and uh, I guess the, the city, if you'd call it that. But you kind of have to plan ahead if you don't have anything like worked out for dinner. You can't just run a quarter mile or half mile up the road and pick something up. Uh, you got to be, you got to have a little more forethought, you know. So that's uh, that's good and bad. Uh, the good is we don't eat out as much. <laughs> but uh, if it is a situation where we do need to, it's at least uh, 20 minutes to a place and 20 minutes back. So, you know, it has its ups and downs. Um, I was gonna say number two is utilities, but I'm seeing some, some wasps over here. So I'm gonna make number two be uh, wildlife and insects. Uh, for whatever reason, it didn't occur to me that, you know, we'd have raccoons in the trash can and possums over here and deer running across the yard and all that stuff. And it's all cool, you know, we like seeing the deer. We don't have an in-ground garden yet, so they're not not really a pest to us, but they can be at some point in the future. But I'm looking at these wasps and I'm kind of uncomfortable because getting stung hurts. There are ticks out here and chiggers and uh, all kinds of things that, you know, I didn't even know <laughs> were insects. <laughs> so to the utilities, we'll, we'll call this number three. I'd, I don't know how many items are on my list. I'm kind of just, you know, kind of winging it. I've been thinking about it for a week or so, but I didn't write anything down. I probably should have. Utilities are a lot different out here than they are in the city. Uh, in the city, we're on city water, natural gas, electricity, uh, pretty decent broadband internet. The service itself is good. The, the company's business practices aside, uh, the service is actually good. So out here, uh, we are on well water, we have a septic tank, and we have a propane tank. The only thing that, in, that runs on propane in the house is the furnace. We've got an electric water heater, and everything else is electric, the stove and everything. So I've probably spent $1,200 on propane in the last six months. Granted, when the guy moved out that sold us the place, he didn't fill it up. And I don't really blame him. I wouldn't fill it up if I wasn't gonna be here to use it either. But it was about 500 bucks initially to fill it up. And that was at 177 a gallon. Then the next time we needed it filled up, it was two and a quarter a gallon. So, you know, winter prices for propane are definitely higher than summer prices. So not counting the first fill up, it's been about 700 bucks, which is still more than I've ever paid in a year for natural gas. And I'm talking about a five month window here. So let's talk about the internet. <laughs> I did some research before we bought the place and I found out that, that 10 megabit DSL was available. So we get here, it's actually in reality maybe six megabit is the highest download speed we've ever gotten and the upload speed is 0.43 megabits which is about 40 kilobytes a second something like that really slow uh, my wife beth and i have both done separate youtube channels for a while 
she was a flight attendant. She did a flight attendant vlog and I did gameplay videos and we can't upload anything from the house. We have to go somewhere else and upload it. She did upload a video once. She started it about 3 a.m. before she went to bed. It was, I don't even know how big the, the file size was, but it uploaded literally until 7 p.m. the next day and it totally killed the internet that whole day because it's asynchronous DSL. It doesn't send and receive packets at the same time. They, um, they, they alternate. So that was a, that was, that's probably the biggest adjustment for me. Uh, we both can't be watching Netflix in different rooms at the same time. Uh, it's just basically, it feels like dial-up if you're old enough to remember dial-up internet. So we've got well and septic. The well water, it's really hard water. And our dishwasher over the course of the last four months has gone from working fine to not rinsing anything off of the, off the glasses or bowls or whatever. And it's because, the, like, I guess it's the minerals in the water. Um, they eventually, trace amounts deposit themselves and they eventually clog it up. And the same thing happens to the coffee pot. I bet it'll happen to the hot water heater also. So I need to look into getting a water softening system for the house. But it's just, it's, it's different. You know, you don't have the monthly cost of a water bill, but we have a pump and we have a pressure tank. And if either of those things breaks, we have to pay for a new one and pay to get it fixed. So I think that cost probably evens itself out over the course of many years. But, you know, septic tank, you've got to put uh, Ridex or yeast in it once a month. The only thing you're supposed to put in it is uh, water and human waste. So we don't have a garbage disposal. That's, that's a big change, too. In the city, you know, you got some leftover vegetables, whatever, on your plate, you just turn on the disposal and dump them down and they just magically go wherever they need to go. We cannot do that. We either scrape it into um, a big Tupperware container that we keep in the fridge and then we put it out for deer and other vegetarians, or we have to scrape it into the trash can and then, you know, just wash the dishes normally. So those are probably the biggest adjustments or things that I wish I had considered or someone had told me uh, before we moved out here. The other is, and this is a biggie, um, we live in central Oklahoma and we don't really get snow, but we get ice storms and we get tornadoes. Uh, if our power goes out, we don't have any water unless we had a generator to run the well pump, which we don't. And those things, need I think 6,000 watts to start and then if they're constantly being used you know they don't use that much but you have to have a fairly big generator to get your well pump started when it needs to pump so you know that's not a con was never a consideration for us before because city water always has pressure unless a pumping station goes out and that's a rarity so we've got, some, we've got some plans for this land. If I didn't say it before, I'm sure I did. It's 25 acres. We've got two ponds and creeks that are occasionally full of water. Usually they're dried up. If we get a lot of rain, there's water flowing through them. Uh, we just got a couple of llamas and we've got some, some projects we wanna do. Um, and that'll all be in future videos. We'll probably be doing some together. Some might just be me, some might just be her. And this is just kind of our take on, you know, life in the country. I've never lived in the country before. This is, it's all new territory to me. Um, I didn't realize how much time it was gonna take to keep this much property mowed. <laughs> so add that to the list of things I, I wish I had known. You see it, you see five acres, you see 10 acres. And you're like, man, that's a lot of land. And then you're on it for a while and you're like, you know, this isn't that much, we could use more. But then you go to mow it and you're like, yeah, this is definitely enough. So I'm gonna leave it there, guys. If you have similar experiences, please leave some comments. 
Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.